we're joined from Brussels by a former EU advisor and current Bruegel chief, Jean Pisani Ferry. Thank you so much for joining us. I wanted, first of all, to ask you, we weren't expecting much news out of the summit. We did get a couple of things. We know that the bank recapitalization is well on the cards. We still don't know about a Greek haircut, how much that debt holders will have to cut their investment by if Greek were to default. Is this a concern? Do we need 50 or 60 percent on that? Well, I think... The, the assessment that was, uh, that was leaked, actually, uh, by the Troika uh, is finally a realistic assessment of the Greek situation. So instead of hoping for the best, they are envisaging uh, you know, the, the, the likely and even, uh, even uh, pessimistic scenarios. Uh, and I think that's what, exactly what was needed. So now we have a proper assessment of the risk involved and the haircut that is likely to be necessary uh, to bring the debt ratio down to a sustainable level over a reasonably wide range of scenarios. But and that's likely to be 60, 50 to 60 percent. Yeah. Jean Pisani Ferry, what we also heard from the Troika is that basically deteriorating circumstances have happened in Greece. Is this not the right time to think, hold on a second, all the austerity measures we're putting on Greece are actually hurting growth, and at the end of the day, that's going to be far worse than if the debt level went up a touch? Well, you know, the, the, what they say that the, the growth outlook is not what it was and uh, what it was supposed to be. And uh, I think that's absolutely realistic and that the privatizations are not uh, to the order of magnitude that uh, was assumed in the previous uh, review. So all, all that is inevitable. And in terms of what we're seeing for the EFSF, we've had a lot of investors and a lot of analysts saying they're concerned because if you put somewhere in between, so if you have this kind of EFSF being a guarantor, then it screws up the market. It's much more difficult to see what the market means in terms of bond yields. Is this a concern? Are we going at it the wrong way? Well, the EFSF uh, discussion is a, is a really difficult one. I think on Greece and on the banks, we're coming close or we're at uh, an agreement uh, that uh, actually was uh, expected, had been in discussion for some time, and in my view, broadly makes sense. I mean, we may wish to look at the fine prints, especially for the banks, but uh, broadly it makes sense. On the FSF, it's obviously much more difficult uh, because uh, we're in a second or in a, even a third best uh, uh, situation where uh, there are many constraints and uh, the possibility of coming to something uh, that really is effective, is going to reassure market, is not going to uh, you know, have unexpected consequences, is really something uh, uncertain. So do you have a preferred solution? We understand now that actually they won't try and leverage the ECB's balance sheet, which the ECB and also Germany were fervently against. At the same time, now there are two or three options left. One of them is going through the IMF and the other is just the EFSF becoming the main guarantor. What do you think is best? Well, I think the, the leverage option was, was better. Uh, in my view, it was separating out the risk uh, left to the FSF and uh, left to the ECB the role of uh, providing uh, liquidity to the FSF. So it was a, a relatively neat solution, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that it has not been adopted. Uh, now, of the two other solutions you're mentioning, I think they're not substitutes. They can well uh, be complementary. You could imagine having the FSF providing this role of, uh, of uh, insurer for first losses, and then you could imagine also having some support from IMF or from international partners. Uh, Jean Pizani Ferry, it seems that European leaders have really inched towards a revamped strategy, but then it's only Wednesday that we'll know whether they're able to contain the debt crisis. Do you think that now the odds are in favor for EU leaders? Have we reached a point where they realize the gravity and the severity of the situation? Well, I think they have. Uh, you know, leaders uh, holding uh, two summits in, uh, in four days, that's unprecedented, and that indicates that they have realized the gravity of the situation. And I think, uh, you know, we shouldn't underestimate it. Um, so this doesn't mean that uh, solutions are easy to find, but at least there is now the sense of urgency that had been lacking in some previous uh, meetings. 
One very last question. Is Mr. Berlusconi the one that we need to worry about the most? He was really put to the task over the weekend, and he seemed to say, look, it's a conspiracy theory. I'm doing nothing wrong. I think there is worry about the, and, and legitimately so, about the ability of, uh, of Italy uh, to, to respond, to have this sense of urgency that we're seeing, seeing elsewhere. I mean, we've seen that since summer, since the start of the purchases of Italian bonds by the ECB, uh, the backtracking on fiscal commitment, on tax commitments by the uh, Italian coalition, and since then, this sense of urgency that we're seeing uh, everywhere uh, seems uh, to be lacking in Italy.